If you haven't heard of Parhole, it's a clever piece of software which acts as a network-wide ad blocker without the need for browser plugins or any other software on your computers and mobile devices. It enables you to block ads on websites, ads in apps on mobile devices, and even your smart TV, regardless of the software they're running. Parhole also improves your network speed because the ads are blocked before they're downloaded. This also saves on data if you're on a limited data plan. A web interface lets you interact with your Parhole and view stats on your network traffic. You can find out a bit more about what Parhole can do through the link in the video description. Now that you know what Powerhole is, let's have a look at how to set one up on your home network, step by step. If you're running a large network with lots of users and traffic, then the best device to use would be one of the Raspberry Pi 3 or 4 models, with an Ethernet connection to your router. But for a smaller home network with less than 50 devices, and only a couple of users online at a time, a Pi 0W works perfectly. I've been using one for around a month now. You're going to need a Raspberry Pi 0W, a micro SD card of at least 16 gigabytes, and something to put the Pi in to protect it. You can usually buy these kits online for around $30 to $50, which includes everything you need, even a power supply, although you can buy the Pi alone for as little as $10 if you do some searching. You won't need a mouse, keyboard or monitor for this, as we'll be using another computer on the network to set the Pi hole up. Plug your micro SD card into your computer. Don't worry about formatting it yet, we'll get to that in a minute. Start by downloading the Raspberry Pi Imager on your computer. This is a fairly new tool, but it's one of the easiest to use. You just select the Raspberry Pi operating system you need, which in our case is Raspberry Pi OS Lite, and then select the SD card you want to write the image to. Click on Write and let the tool do the rest. It'll write the image, check it, and then eject the SD card. There's a bit more to do on the SD card before we're done on the computer, so you'll need to plug it in again to access it. You might get a couple of windows pop up, and one which says you need to format the card in order to use it. Just ignore these and close them. Don't format the card again. There should be one readable partition on the card called boot. You should be able to open this partition and see a number of files in it. We need to add two files to this directory, one which tells the power how to connect to your network, and the other to enable SSH so that you can access it over the network. Download the network settings template which I've linked to and open it in a basic text editor like WordPad. In the network settings section, you need to add your local Wi-Fi network name next to SSID and your network password next to PSK. You can also change your country code at the top if you'd like. This can be set up later though. Save and close the file. Now change the extension of the file from .txt to .conf. Click yes if you're given a warning. Now copy this file into your boot directory. That's the first one done. Now we just need to add the SSH file. Create a new text file and change its name to SSH and remove the extension. So the file should just be a blank file called SSH with no extension. Once you've got both of these files on your card, you can eject and remove it. Plug the SD card into your PI and then put it in the case. Plug the power cable in and wait a few seconds for it to boot up. Now you need to figure out your Pi's assigned IP address. One of the easiest ways to do this is by logging onto your router's admin page. There are often details on how to do this on the label of your router if you haven't done it before. Depending on how complex your router's software is, you may need to do some exploring. You'll need to find a page which lists all of the devices currently connected to the network, along with their IP address. This is usually called a DHCP table. Note the IP address assigned to your Pi. While you're logged in, it's worth setting this IP address up as a static IP, so that your router always assigns the same address to your Pi hole. This is important, and you'll see why in a bit. Again, all routers are a bit different, so you'll need to do some digging if you don't know how to set up a static IP on your router. If you can't find the option, try googling your router's model and the word static IP, and you should find some information. Now that you've got your Pi's IP address, we can access it over the network. 
You'll need to install a terminal emulator, like PuTTY, to access your Pi's terminal. Enter your Pi's IP address and then click Open to attempt to connect to the Pi. Now you'll need to log into your Pi. The default username is Pi and the password is Raspberry. You'll want to change these as soon as possible, so it's a good idea to run the configuration tool first. This tool lets you change a number of settings on your Pi. As a start, you should change your default username, your password, and make sure that you got the correct regional settings selected. Once you've done this, you can move on to installing Powerhole by typing in the following command. The Power will start downloading and installing the software. I've sped this part up. It does take a couple of minutes to run through and you'll then get to the following page to guide you through the Powerhole setup. For the most part, you can just run through the default selected options and hit OK for each. You might want to change your upstream DNS provider if you'd like. Also make sure that the IP address listed is the one which you set as a static IP for your PI. It'll then run through another setup process and you'll finally get an installation complete display. Take note of the admin web page password as you'll need this to log onto the Pi at a later stage to view the detailed statistics and change any settings. You can now close your terminal connection. Test if Pi is running by going to your browser and typing in the IP address of your Pi, along with a forward slash and admin. You should see a page like this show up. You'll notice that no queries have been received or blocked yet because the router isn't directing traffic through the Pi just yet. There's one last thing to set up. You'll need to log back into your router and find your DNS settings page. Here you'll need to set up your Powerhole's IP address as the primary DNS server. If your router has to have a secondary DNS server, then type the same address into that field as well. Click on save and you may need to reboot your network devices to take effect. If you go back to your Powerhole dashboard, you should now see requests coming through and ad queries being blocked. If you log into your Powerhole using the admin password that was created during setup, you should have more access to the network statistics and see detailed logs. You'll also be able to change settings, add or remove domains on the block list, and reboot or turn off your PAR. Remember that if you turn off your PAR and your router's primary and secondary DNS server are set to your PAR's IP address, you'll no longer have access to the internet until your PAR is back online. Some routers have a USB port on them, which has enough power to supply an external hard drive. This is usually enough to drive a Raspberry Pi 0W as well, so you can ensure that they're always on together. This guide is just a starting point to get your Powerhole up and running. There's a lot more that can be done using Powerhole once you're comfortable with it. Let me know if you've used Powerhole in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials, and reviews.